So here is my think aloud about statistics and how we use them for research insofar as we're learning this as part of our course. Uh, this is like learning a new language actually. I speak from a language background and given that this is a new language for me I've been struggling with this and I imagine others have too. Once you get the meaning behind the words all of a sudden the words on the page are irrelevant because there's just a bunch of words or a bunch of numbers all of which together have the same meaning. So I thought how can I make this more sensible for myself as I work through these examples in SPSS or look at them in the videos uh, that Robin has been sending. What I did was I reduced <laughs> excuse the pun, to the lowest common denominator, the definitions we've been working on, and I think as they are helpful to me, perhaps they will be helpful to you. These are the key points. That the mean is the average of a set of numbers or a calculated central value. Standard deviation is just the spread. And the p or probability value is just the significance of your results. And what we need to remember, or keep it on a little sticky beside us at all times, is more than 0 0.05, no significance or difference. Less than, there is a significance or difference. And I personally find I have to keep that written somewhere in front of my face and keep returning back to that. Uh, because sometimes putting a number to the words isn't always clear. And then there's the three tests we're working on. Independent T, you're comparing between two, two samples. Pair T, comparing two samples before and after an intervention. And then Cohen's D, comparing the distance between the two results of those two samples before and after intervention. At least this is how I was able to reduce these concepts to what is most important about each one. So let's take a look then at the work we've been doing. Uh, this video from Robin about the independent t-test. I went through it using SPSS copying what is here and what came to my mind what uh, was troubling me is why are there sig here which is p and sig here which is p. Is this the singular p and this the pooled p? I was trying to wrap my mind around this. I wasn't clear. However, I do realize it's based on these figures here that we're determining if there's a more or less than 0 0.05 significance or lack of significance. But that question came to my mind. Perhaps it came to someone else's. Um, and then this DF, I can't remember if it was a degrees or difference of freedom, didn't know why that was brought up and if we need to know this and why we need to know this. Um, in any event, that was the major uh, sort of question I had about the independent t-test, why these two sort of p figures and is one simply uh, enlightening us about the other. In the end, it's still about is the number significantly above or below 0 0.05 for you to say there is a difference or not. So that's the independent one with the with the uh, comparing the two samples on one variable. Then we go to the paired, and we're looking before and after for those samples. Here, uh, I was a little bit confused in terms of when do we determine that it's at the line. And then what do we choose? Uh, at times, Robin was saying that, well, maybe you have to be conservative. How do you know if to be conservative and to choose significance or insignificance or not? So this was my dilemma. And uh, when we look at the uh, assignment for today, uh, we need to address that because we have to make that decision when we're answering. How do you know what decision to make? As for Cohen's, I think that this one was perhaps the least uh, difficult to understand because the formula is given to determine the differences between the means, the average standard deviation, and then all you're doing 
is taking one away from the other to give you that difference in the two spreads. What's helpful to remember are the numbers down here, just like we had for P above or below 0 0.05. We have these numbers of significance that if you keep them again <laughs> beside you somewhere, it's easier to interpret the results. This I just find that it's because it's so comparative, uh, it's easier to follow what's happening. So that's uh, where I'm at. My major uh, question was, when do you know to decide conservatively or not? And uh, what is SIG in the two different columns and how does that affect uh, what we write down?